What's going on, Imperials? The new Super Smash Bros. game is right around the corner. And while they've already said that there will be minimal new characters, that won't stop people from suggesting their favorites. I'm personally more interested in the Pokemon characters that could be included in the games. I didn't think that they would want to break their streak of a full team of six, but apparently everybody's back, so anything goes. And with over 800 Pokemon alone, there's a huge pool from which to choose. So, here are the top six Pokemon I'd like to see added to Super Smash Bros. Number six, Zoroark. Personally, I'm not too crazy about this one, but I could see the strategic appeal of including this Pokemon. After Brawl included Lucario, we figured that the next Smash game would feature a similar pocket monster from the fifth generation. And clearly many parallels can be drawn between the two stage bipedal canine-esque non-legendaries with their own movie. And I maintain that Zoroark would have been in the next Smash game if the scheduling had lined up just a bit differently. Instead, we got Gen 6 before the next Smash came out, and Zoroark was passed over. But that doesn't mean that it still couldn't make a splash. Maybe it's been there all along and has just been using its illusion ability. But what about moves? Pokemon special moves are a bit easier than other characters because they actually have assigned moves in their native game. So, what I think Zoroark's moveset could look like is its B, or standard special move, would be Beat Up, a move that would be more powerful the more damage Zoroark has taken. Its side B move would be Night Slash, where the user launches sideways at the foe. Its up B move would be Jump Kick, hurling its body upward with a powerful kicking motion. And its down B would be Night Daze, a move that sends out a pulse of energy and could even occasionally stun opponents. And his final smash would be Black Hole Eclipse. Since we now have Z-moves, we might as well use them, right? Plus, that actually makes sense in the canon of the games, as opposed to knowing an impossible fifth move. I think Zoroark could find a respectable place among the Smash roster. And just the fact that I'm advocating for it, despite them not being my favorite, should be enough to sway you as well. Number 5. Chestnut I know that they already have one Kalos starter, but if you ask me, they picked the wrong one. Chestnut is a noble warrior and would fit right at home in Smash. This valiant knight should get a chance to dust it up with some other Nintendo classics. Can you imagine this guy slamming his tree trunk arms around, just wrecking everybody? Not to mention, you could definitely take advantage of that shell in some pretty cool ways. For instance, when idle, perhaps simple projectiles aimed at its back would be deflected, similar to how Link's shield works. Some people want Decidueye in the game, which I can see that as well, but he was in Pokin, and I did strive not to be too repetitive in that respect. Plus, Chestnut hasn't received nearly the same level of recognition, despite being just as prepared for armed combat. Chestnut's B move would be Needle Arm, acting very much like Donkey Kong's Charging Punch. Over B would be Grass Knot, flipping over nearby opponents. Up B is Sky Uppercut. Now, this is not technically a move that Chestnut can learn, however it's a better fit than Hammer Arm to allow Chestnut to have a vertical punching move. And Down B is of course Spiky Shield. Chestnut would retreat inside its shell with the spike sticking out further than usual, not taking any damage while in this form and hurting enemies. Its final smash would be all-out pummeling, taking a lead from many directional blasting final smashes. Chestnut is comparatively underrepresented next to its fellow water starter, so I think it's time that they be allowed to step in and show the people what they're really made of. Number 4, Necrozma. Honestly, I don't know where this came from. Necrozma is just fine in my book, but you won't find it on any of my favorite lists. But once this idea popped in my head, I have not been able to shake it. Something just makes me think Necrozma would fit incredibly well into the Smash Pantheon. 
First of all, it floats above the ground, which is neat and not something that we really see a lot of. Just the way that it looks, I can imagine its movements across the field, picking up its foes with its giant hand feet like some kind of psychic Zabulba. I feel like he might even be Mammoth Crew material. Obviously, it could use its signature move, Photon Geyser, as its standard special move. I imagine it's sort of like Rob's eye beams. Its over B could be Prismatic Laser, a very powerful move that causes serious damage, but leaves Necrozma somewhat vulnerable afterwards to recharge. Its up B move could be Stored Power, which doesn't exactly do the same in the Pokemon games, but could carry over a bit of similarity by being more powerful from the more damage that Necrozma has taken. Its down B move would be Light Screen, almost identical to Fox's Reflect or Pitch Shield. And what better Final Smash could there be than morphing into Ultra Necrozma? It would be able to decimate the entire field. I wasn't really wowed by Necrozma's stint as the antagonist in the Ultra games, but included in the Smash series, his legacy could live on with far more impact than ever. Number 3, Lycanroc. Not to harp too much on Sun and Moon, but it couldn't hurt to have a regular Pokémon from those games, right? And I thought we'd step outside the box and go with a kind of fighter that we don't really have. Aside from the terrible Duck Hunt and Ivysaur, maybe, there aren't really any quadruped fighters in Smash. This would require adjusting the standard playstyle, but I feel it would be one to which fans would enjoy adapting. I propose the Dusk form of Lycanroc, just to meet in the middle so that nobody feels fully excluded. It would hold items in its mouth, obviously, and I suppose opponents, too. It would also need to strike with its claws, spikes, or teeth. Its standard special attack would be Crunch, which I guess would function similar to Wario's standard special move. Over B would of course be Accelerock, quickly charging to the side and smashing into the foe. Up B is Stone Edge, where Lycanroc shoots upward with several large boulders. It's a particularly hard-hitting move. Down B is the move Counter. As another of the special moves that Lycanroc Dust can learn, it is a move that's already used by some others in the game. And its final smash would be its signature Z-move, Splintered Storm Shards. So, while maybe not the most popular Pokémon, and not even my own personal first choice, I feel like this is a direction in which Smash needs to go to continue experimenting on what exactly it means to be allowed in their games. Otherwise, we never would have gotten our Ridley. Number 2. Pokémon Trainer After Brawl came out, my favorite character was the Pokémon Trainer. I just loved getting to play three for the price of one. And, since I thought it was such a good idea, I thought to myself, surely they'll have the Johto starters in the next game? That didn't happen. But that also didn't stop me from making up variants of all the generations that were out at the time. So, from way back then, here's verbatim my idea from ten years ago. The best one, in my opinion, was the Hoenn variant. First off, I had the stages rotate with each one, because I didn't think it was fair for Fire to always be the strongest. So, for Hoenn, I had it set up with Torchic, Marshchomp, and Sceptile. Obviously, with Pokémon Trainer, the down special option is always to switch between the individual combatants. However, the rest of the moves are unique. So, for Torchic, the B move is Ember, the side B move is Peck, and the up B move is Flail. With Marshchomp, the standard B move is Water Pulse, the side B move is Mud Shot, and the up B is Rapid Spin, which acts as an upward version of Luigi's Cyclone. With Sceptile, the standard B move is Energy Ball, which acts very much like Lucario's Aura Sphere or Mewtwo's Shadow Ball. Its side B move is Leaf Blade, and up B is Body Slam, 
almost exactly like DDD's vertical recovery as well. And Pokemon Trainer's final smash is Triple Finish, where the Pokemon fire off the hugely powerful signature classic moves of their type. But now there are even stronger moves. The starters can now learn Frenzy Plant, Hydro Cannon, and Blast Burn respectively. So they would still all attack together with just a slight update to what moves they're using. There are numerous ways that the Pokemon Trainer model could be adapted, but simply branching out with a bit more of the starters is the best way to begin in my book. Number 1. Empoleon I'll admit that this is almost 100% bias since it is my favorite Pokemon of all time. But Empoleon was one of the new fighters that was included in Pokémon along with fan favorites like Decidueye and Scizor and Darkrai. So clearly there's some demand out there for this Pokémon. Piplup has always been popular, being in Smash since its debut as a Pokéball health item. So why not reward its evolution with full inclusion as a playable character? Empoleon is powerful and regal and could clearly give DDD a run for his money. Speaking of, Empoleon is big enough, and being a steel type, certainly heavy enough to be included in the Mammoth crew should he wish to do so. Empoleon's B move would be Bubble Beam, which I imagine to be like Bowser or Charizard's fire. It would fire off a steady stream of bubbles and begin to dissipate the longer you hold it. Its side B move is Drill Peck, which is pretty self-explanatory, Empoleon charges at the foe, spiraling towards them with its beak. The up B move is Aqua Jet, which functions exactly like Fox or Falco's jump, pausing to surround itself with water and then shooting off in a direction of your choosing. And down B is Avalanche. This move has Empoleon hop up and then quickly come down, launching a rush of snow and frozen boulders straight down if in the air, and fanning out slightly if on the ground. And of course, for its final smash, Empoleon would use Hydro Vortex. Empoleon's inclusion may simply be fan service to me alone, but if it did see a smash debut, it might become somebody's main and could gain even more fans in the process, only to further justify its presence. So. Those are the Pokémon I'd most like to see incorporated into Smash. Also be sure to check out which non-Pokémon characters I would like to see in the games. Which fighters would you like to see in Smash? Let me know down in the comments. Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And we'll see you around next time!